We're going to talk about some Deshaun Watson replacements for 2025 on today's show. But I am calling on all Browns fans, they're not fair weather fans, like that even exists for Cleveland sports fans, to subscribe to the channel because we're not going to go anywhere. We're not going to stop covering this team. So if you're not going to stop rooting on this team, hit that subscribe button down below. Let's talk about probably the biggest question the Browns are facing right now. What are they going to do at quarterback in 2025 with Sean Watson going to be recovering from an Achilles injury and, you know, him just not playing well, that whole thing. The Browns may decide to go a different direction at quarterback. So I want to leave no stone unturned. We're going to run through free agent options, trade options, and of course the NFL draft. But First, my prediction as to what's going to happen next year, you probably don't want to hear it, and I don't think it's what the Browns should do, but it's what I think the Browns will do. And I think Deshaun Watson, when he recovers from this Achilles injury, will return as the starter. Would I do that? No, I wouldn't. I think we've had a big enough body of work here and a big enough sample size to believe that Deshaun Watson is not the best option for the Browns at quarterback next season. But does Jimmy Haslam think that? And that's ultimately what matters most here. No, I do not. So, unfortunately for most Browns fans, I would say, except for a couple of burners on Twitter, Deshaun Watson's likely going to be coming back as the starter to open up next season because like last year when Watson went down, he went in, he went down right as he was playing some of his best football. And if you look at the last two quarters in Philly, the second half, and the first two quarters of the Bengals game before he got injured, he was playing, without a doubt, the best football of the 2024 season. He was accurate, 26 for 29, 250 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. He had them in the red zone a couple of times, though, between those four quarters and penalties in Philly, and then an injury against the Bengals derailed any efforts of getting a touchdown. So I think the Browns are likely going to look at that as a vote of confidence that we should continue with Deshaun Watson. So the pinned comment on today's episode, will Watson start week one, 2025? Not do you want him to start, but just at your core, if you had to predict it, who is going to be running out of that tunnel week one next year? Give me a yes or no if you think it's going to be Deshaun Watson. Now, let's talk about what the Browns can do replacement-wise if they do decide to go down a different path. Step one, or option number one, I should say, would be NFL free agency. That is the first thing up in the NFL calendar when the offseason gets here. That'll open up sometime in early March, and that is the cheapest option in some ways to go out and find a Deshaun Watson replacement. So who are the free agent quarterbacks coming up? Well, like most years, there aren't a ton of great options. Teams don't let good quarterbacks just hit the open market. But there are some notable names here. Sam Darnold is playing really good right now. If the Vikings, for whatever reason, let Darnold go because they really want to start J.J. McCarthy, that would be a name worth looking at. Then there's Jameis Winston, who we'll talk about more in a second. Zach Wilson and Jared Stidham are both behind Bo Nix. Both are free agents. That's an option for De uh, for Cleveland. Trey Lance, if the Browns and Andrew Barry want to take a chance on a former third overall pick. There's a familiar face in Jacoby Brissett. Drew Locke has starting experience. Our good friend Joe Flacco is on a one-year deal with the Colts. And then two Steelers quarterbacks, who I doubt both return next year. Justin Fields and Russell Wilson. So there is plenty of starting experience on the open market this upcoming free agency period. But I would say the leader ish in the clubhouse could be Jameis Winston simply because he's got an opportunity for the second half of this year to audition for a competitive spot on the roster next year to maybe push Watson for that starting role. We saw Joe Flacco last year play lights out football, they didn't bring Flacco back. So I wouldn't be surprised if the Browns decide not to bring Winston back, even if he plays well, simply for the same reason they did not bring Flacco back. They do not want to have an awkward moment in the stadium where people are rooting for Jameis when the team wants Watson to be the starter. But Winston will have first crack at it, although I don't think he's a shoe in to come back next year because he was the third quarterback. He was demoted from the backup to the emergency quarterback right before Watson got injured. So clearly the Browns haven't been overly impressed from Jameis in practice in the last couple of weeks. Another name to watch for, what about Jacoby Brissett? I mean, I don't know if any Browns quarterback 
just completely stole the dog pound's hearts in just a matter of weeks like Brissett did. Back in 2022, when he was the starter for the first two-thirds of the year, 2,600 yards, 12 touchdowns, six picks. Sure, the record wasn't what we wanted it to be, but I don't think people put too much blame on Jacoby Brissett for that. Now, he has not been, unfortunately, very good with the Patriots this year, but they also have like probably the worst roster all across the board. They have an awful offensive line. I doubt anyone watching right now can name even two or three receivers they have. So I wouldn't be shocked if the Browns decide to bring back someone who's familiar with Kevin Stefanski. Because at that point, Stefanski's probably going to have a lot of, you know, if he's still coaching, desperation creeping in to get a bounce back season. Or else he might be the next one to go. But I just want to say right now, with the way Joe Flacco has played in Indy when filling in for Anthony Richardson and with Watson going down this year, it was completely charm and soft for Andrew Barry and the Browns to let Joe Flacco leave. I truly feel like they lied to our faces. In January, Barry in his press conference talked about how much they love Joe Flacco and they love to have him back. And then we get reports from Diana Rossini that the Browns never engaged in conversation with Flacco to return. And I, I truly solely believe the reason was they did not want to have an elephant in the room of people are rooting for Flacco to play because he was so good last year off the couch and they don't want to have an awkward split in the locker room between the quarterback they paid $230 million and the quarterback that all the fans want to see play. So soft on the Browns for picking the easy route instead of picking the route that would have been best for this team. Because if Flacco was on this team right now, one, they might have turned to him a little bit earlier. But two, I mean, even though a one and six or season is done, I bet they would have won a handful of games with Joe. Not so sure about that anymore. Now we're going to look at a trade target in a moment and then the NFL draft since that's the last in the pecking order. But first, a quick shout out to our sponsor today, which is Mando. Mando is a whole body deodorant that is safe to use anywhere on your body. It was created by a doctor who saw firsthand how normal BO was being misdiagnosed and mistreated. Mando whole body deodorant is powerful enough for the toughest body odor, but gentle enough to use everywhere, allowing you to put... Mando on your family jewels without any worry because Mando is aluminum free, baking soda free, cruelty free, dye free, and vegan. I love having Mando at my desk when I walk to work like this morning because I've got it waiting for me to kick any bad odor I worked up during my walk out the door. Mando is offering new customers $5 off their starter pack at shopmando.com with promo code chat. Mando starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice like mini body wash and deodorant wipes, and free shipping. Luckily, I've got a discount code to help you guys get hooked up on my favorite smelling whole body deodorant on the market. New customers get $5 off a starter pack with our exclusive code CHAT. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you use code CHAT at shopmando.com. That's shop. M-A-N-D-O.com. I put all that information in the comments and description of today's video. So let's talk about after free agency, if the Browns either don't find a quarterback that they like that's in their price range, or ultimately a lot of those guys return to the teams they're currently on right now, what could they do next? Well, a much more expensive option would be trade, right? That involves taking on a quarterback's contract, and it also involves giving up like Monopoly money that GMs use, which is draft picks, a currency. So, who could the Browns trade for? It's really tough to say only halfway through the season which quarterbacks might flame out on their current teams to the point where they get dealt. But one name that keeps popping up that I see that we have to at least discuss is Kirk Cousins. The Atlanta Falcons signed him to a four-year contract, and then about four or five weeks later, they drafted Michael Penix in the top ten of the NFL draft. Now, I know a lot of people are looking at that Penix draft pick as somewhat confirmation that the Falcons could move on from Kirk after just one season to get their first round pick on the field. I'm just going to tell you right now, and it's probably not what you want to hear if you do want to pursue Cousins, Kirk Cousins is not getting traded. Like, record this right now and come back to me in two years. My prediction is Kirk Cousins is the Atlanta Falcons starting quarterback for at least two years, especially with the way he has been playing so far this year and maybe even three years. The Falcons were very vocal when they drafted Penix that they wanted to go down the Green Bay Packers model of drafting a quarterback and letting him sit. Aaron Rodgers sat for more than one year. 
Jordan Love sat for more than one year. So if they want to use that model, my gut tells me Michael Penix is going to sit for more than one year. So no, even with the Penix pick, I do not believe that Kirk Cousins will be available for a trade in the offseason, especially because he's playing some really good football right now. I mean, he's top five in passing yards. He's accurate with the ball. Ten touchdowns, seven interceptions. Like, Kirk has played some really good ball for the Falcons. I don't see them running him out of town just because they took Penix. If they feel like Kirk can still play at a really high level, then I'm probably going to assume that he'll stay the starter and Penix will continue to sit on the bench and develop. So, no, I would not suggest you get your hope up on Cousins. Yeah, Kirk would be a really fun fit, especially in a Kevin Stefanski offense. I mean, the two overlapped in Minnesota, yeah, for like two seasons. And I'm sure there's a lot of similarities between their scheme and their approach. But it takes two to trade. And even if you really want them to get Kirk because they've got Penix, don't get your hopes up. Cousins ain't going anywhere anytime soon. Third path for the Browns to upgrade from Deshaun Watson. The NFL draft. This is, in some ways, the simplest but also like the most complicated one because it doesn't require any trade. It doesn't require a signing in the offseason. You have complete control. If the player is on the board, when you're on the clock, you get to pick them. But you also don't know what you're getting. That's the NFL draft for you. So as things stand right now, the Browns have the third overall pick in the draft. Remember, when you have teams with the same record, the tiebreaker is strength of schedule. And whoever has the easiest strength of schedule gets to go earlier in the draft since they are same record as you, but with an easier schedule. So it makes some sense. And the Browns have a very difficult schedule. So unless they are the only team with that record at the end of the year, I doubt they win any tiebreaker to move up in the draft. Now, who are some of the top quarterback targets in this upcoming draft class? Cam Ward from Miami, Quinn Ewers from Texas, Shador Sanders from Colorado, Carson Beck from Georgia, Jalen Milrow from Alabama, and Dylan Gabriel from Oregon. We always see maybe one, two late risers in the draft process as we get closer to it when the combine rolls around. But I'll tell you guys right now, of these six guys, four and a half of them suck. Like, Carson Beck sucks out loud. Jalen Milrow stinks. Dylan Gabriel is not an NFL quarterback. Quinn Ewers is probably going to go back to college for another year because he has not put together a good enough resume to enter the draft, which leaves you with Cam Ward and Shador Sanders. And I like both these quarterbacks. You can look at their numbers side by side this year. Both of them come in with, I would say, a unique skill set. Shadour has been so gifted with his legs to scramble and extend plays, whereas Cam Ward has not just a rocket of an arm, but a very accurate arm as well. Now, here's what Mel Kuyper wrote as he puts out his updated big board every so often on these two quarterbacks, starting with Deion's son, Shadour. You won't find a tougher or more resilient quarterback prospect than Sanders, who took 52 sacks last season, but still put up really strong numbers. I'm always impressed watching him throw on the move, rolling either left or right. He is very accurate in those spots and has the arm to drive the ball. When his mechanics and footwork are sound, he can pick apart a defense. And while he's not necessarily a major rushing threat, he can keep the chains moving with his legs when there is an opening. I'm just going to be... The bearer of bad news right now and say Dion's not going to let Shador play for the Browns. Like Dion has been very vocal about having a say in his son's football careers. Does anyone really believe that Dion Sanders will let Shador Sanders play for the Cleveland Browns? I know it's a really crappy thing to say out loud because it's such a bad reflection on your team, but we've seen quarterbacks do this before. John Elway refused to play for the Colts. He got traded to the Broncos. Obviously, Eli refused to play for the Chargers. The Mannings never really would say why, but just no. So he got his way out of it. Went to the Giants. The rest is history. The same thing is going to happen here if the Browns really want Shador. I just think Dion will come in and go, uh-uh. And that's that. Now, what about, Mel- what about Cam Ward? Here's what Mel Kuyper said. Ward has an unorthodox delivery, but he throws with accuracy and velocity from different arm angles. His 10.4 yards per attempt mark is a career high. He displays solid game management traits, and while he had some ball security issues last season at Washington State, that doesn't appear to be an issue in 2024. And when things break down around him, Ward can extend plays with his legs, either throwing on the move or picking up first downs as a runner. To say Ward has been a perfect fit with the Hurricanes 
might still be an understatement. I like his toughness, swagger, and confidence. Cam Ward, of all the six quarterbacks we looked at today, has the best chance, I think, for maybe being a Brown in 2025. The Browns, like I said at the beginning of the video, I believe are going to return with Deshaun Watson as their starting quarterback. But if they continue to lose and they get a top three draft pick and Cam Ward is there, whether the Browns have the first overall pick, second, third, who knows, they may decide, listen, we wanted to come back with Watson, but Ward is so special in our eyes, we can't pass on him. And even if they want to make Deshaun Watson the starter still, I mean, he's got two years left on his contract beyond this season, right? He's got, yeah, two more years. So you can roll with Watson if they really, really want to for 2025. And if things don't go well, it'd be a lot easier to move on from him with just one year left on his contract. And then you can turn it over to Cam Ward, who have a year to develop on the bench. Some background on him, by the way. He's a little bit, like I wouldn't say Jaden Daniels-esque because they're very different you know, size types. But in terms of their uh, resume, hopped around a little bit. I mean, Ward was at Encarnte Ward um, in Texas and then went to Washington State and now with the U. So some strengths and weaknesses as I watch and read more about him. Immense arm talent. He's got the ability to make a lot of different throws. That's a cliche that people throw out there. Immense arm talent. He can make all the throws. What does that really mean? Making all the throws means, hey, when you're on your when you're on the move, you're going from your left to your right, but you want to throw across your body. Mac Jones, for example, is a quarterback who can't make that throw because it gets picked off when he plays the Cowboys in its return for six. Cam Ward has shown that he can make a lot of high-level difficulty throws. Weakness, though, sometimes he trusts his arm too much. And when you're playing schools like Virginia Tech and Cal, no offense to them, you can get away with throwing footballs into tight windows that really have no business being there because the DB might not make you pay for it. In the NFL, they will make you pay for it. And that's something that's just going to come with experience at the next level and coaching and film review. So Cam Ward, to me, looks like a really good option for the Browns if he's there when they're on the clock. Of course, we have a long ways to go. But if the Browns fall in love with Ward, this could be a pick that sways them. I still think, though, that the Browns want to continue starting Deshaun Watson next year, and they want to build around him, and that probably results in going with an offensive lineman in round one. There's not a terrific offensive lineman class. There's Kelvin Banks from Texas, and there's Will Campbell from LSU. Those are like the two early front runners to be top 10, top 15 draft picks, but we'll see if the Browns reach on one of those guys, if they view them as a reach just because they want to go offensive line. There's a lot of football left. I mean, I don't think anyone should sink their teeth too much into anything with the NFL draft months and months away, and we're not even you know sure what pick the Browns are going to have. But if you were the decision maker and you had to pick between one of these two quarterbacks, which one has impressed you more, Shador Sanders or Cam Ward? I would really suggest everyone just find some time to get Miami on one of your screens during a college football Saturday because – there's a chance he could be on your screen when you're watching Browns games next fall. So, who would you rather have, Sanders or Ward? That's going to do it for us on today's episode. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Go check us out on Instagram, by the way, Browns Report IG. I post content over there. Would really appreciate it if you went and support us over on another platform.